Hey guys, this is Booligan with Airsoft Retreat, BooliganAirsoft.com and Airsoft Insider Magazine. Today we are looking at part two of my Real Steel AR-15 pistol buildup. Today we are going to look at some of the parts that went into the lower receiver. Now the first thing that you'll probably notice is this thing. What is this thing? This is actually two separate parts available through Thwarts and Customs as part of their pistol builders package. Now. This may look like a stock, rest assured it is not a stock. Putting a stock on a pistol is a federal crime without a uh, proper $200 tax stamp and uh, registering as a, a short barrel rifle. This is not a stock, cannot stress this enough. What this is, this is a what's called a saddle. You can see it kind of flares out a little bit um, from a company called CAA. Um, it is mated to a, a quick detach mounting buffer tube cover manufactured by Thorntz and Customs. They originally came out with this buffer tube cover for use with their uh, stock system. Um, the stock was basically kind of a workaround. Um, it got rid of the pistol grip and added a little stock area there. Now, as everybody knows, AR-15, most of them, the vast majority of them, require a buffer tube to function. That's where the bolt goes back, or the bolt carrier group goes back when you fire. Can't get rid of it, so you have to have this there. So if you don't have a stock attached to it, it looks kind of funky and it's uncomfortable. So Thorts and Customs came up with this polymer cover that you were able to attach cheek rest to. They sent it off to the ATF with a request for information to see if it's, le uh, its legality in certain situations. One of those was attaching it to a, an AR-15 pistol buffer tube. And the ATF came back and said, it's not a stock. You're totally kosher putting this thing on AR-15 buffer tubes, even with the cheek rest on it. Well, CAA came out with this side saddle that is designed to mount on an LE stock. Clicks onto the LE stock and then bolts in place. Again, another enterprising person put that on an AR-15 pistol buffer tube, took a picture over to the ATF and said, hey, I've attached this, this cheek rest to my buffer tube. Is this a pistol still or did I make an SBR? ATF came back and said, nope, still a pistol. You did not make an SBR because it is not intended to go in your shoulder socket. It's not intended to be shouldered. It's intended as a cheek rest. So it'll give you a little bit better uh, cheek weld for aiming down your pistol. ATF said, okay. So what Thoris and Customs then did, the problem with this on normal pistol buffer tubes is there's no good mounting system for it. You used to have to just attach zip ties or Velcro or whatever, and it was sloppy and looked like crap and wobbled around like crazy. So what Thornton did is they came up with this little adapter, these little pieces that fit in there, and a little bracket here, and they came up with an entire kit. They call it their Pistol Builders Package. And what the Pistol Builders Package comes with is the CAA cheek rest, the, the buffer tube cover, and it comes with what's called a keyed buffer tube. Now, looking at the bottom of this, the strip in the middle, that is buffer tube, and if you're familiar at all with AR-15s, you'll notice it's missing something. It's missing the holes that a multi-position collapsible stock would lock into. The reason being, there's something called constructive intent. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so this is not legal advice. It cannot be construed as such. But constructive intent, basically, let's say I have an AR-15 pistol. That's the only AR-15 that I have in my house. And I have a buffer tube that's standard, has the holes in it. And I happen to have a few AR-15 stocks laying around like 10 of them on my wall and like 30 of them in storage. Technically, the ATF could look at this as I am intending to illegally build a short barrel rifle because it really would be easy enough to just grab a stock out and say this uh, Ares M4 and toss it on there. That would be a problem and that would be a federal crime and would land me in federal poke me in the ass prison and that's not a place that I want to be. So. I decided to go with their full pistol builders package that includes this buffer tube that does not allow you to mount a stock at all. And that gets around the whole constructive intent issue. It also comes with a spring and a three ounce buffer um, and all the hardware necessary to attach this to a naked receiver. For $117 plus shipping, and shipping wasn't too bad, it was about eight bucks, um, you can put together a very, very nice AR-15 pistol using this setup. Now. We'll take it to the range in a future video, but I'll give you some of you know some idea of how it works. You've got these nice QD sling swivel points here where you can attach your QD sling of your choice. It allows you to kind of brace it up. 
get a nice cheek weld, very, very comfortable to shoot. Now, it's pretty short. It's about 11 inches from there to there. The ATF has also issued another letter. Uh, an attorney who specializes in firearm matters sent the ATF a letter saying, hey, we're seeing people who have this SB-15. Everyone knows the SIG arm brace, the arm brace that everybody knows and loves, and it's kind of the part du jour of AR-15 pistol build right now. Personally, I hate it. I do not like the way it looks. I don't think it's comfortable. I think it just looks really tacky on short-barreled AR pistols. I just, it's just not my thing. It looks too big, too clunky, it weighs a lot, and it's made of rubber. Um, this is much, much better option, in my opinion. However, I digress. This attorney sent a letter to the ATF and said, hey, this is a product that's designed to be worn as an arm brace. Is it illegal for somebody to shoulder it, to tuck it into their shoulder and get a good cheek weld with it? And the ATF came back and said, no, that is not illegal. That's totally kosher. The intent of the product is to be used as an arm brace and an arm brace only. If people are using it beyond its intent, that's not our problem. That's not against the law. For all the crap that we give the ATF, in some ways, their technology division is actually pretty cool in a lot of ways um, in approving some of this stuff. So basically, to prove that this thing is an AR-15 pistol, I pretty much have to carry three or four letters from the ATF, and we'll talk about the fourth one when we talk about my upper. Um, but it's, it's kind of just one of those things. It is not designed for it, it's designed to enhance your cheek weld. And it does that, it is very comfortable. If you've ever used an LMT style crane, crane stock, this thing will feel right at home. It feels great, you can get a great, great sight picture with it, very comfortable, easy to shoot all day. It's pretty short, tuck into the shoulder, but it's because it's not designed to do that. If you are doing that, you are doing it against the manufacturer's recommendation, your mileage may vary. The other thing we're gonna look at today is this pistol grip. Now you'll notice this pistol grip is quite vertical compared to a standard AR pistol grip, which is at much more of an angle. This is from, hilariously enough, Umbrella Corporation. Yes, Umbrella Corporation. You may know them from Resident Evil franchise. Well, a firearm company decided to name themselves Umbrella Corporation's Weapon Research Group, and they came up with some pretty cool stuff. This is their Grip 23, I believe is what it is called. It has a slight texture to it, but nothing too obtrusive. It had some slight seam lines that needed a little bit of flash uh, removal with a razor blade. I will say the same about the CAA cheek rest. However, the Thornton adapter was perfect, but the CAA cheek rest is kind of an inexpensive part and you needed to shave some of those lines off. The pistol grip is very comfortable. And when you're dealing with something that has a shorter buffer tube on it, you want a more vertical grip. If it's at an angle, it can be very uncomfortable. Um, but this grip is very comfortable, lightweight, hollow, there's nothing in there. Uh, there's no inserts or anything available to hold stuff. So it's not as useful as say like a Magpul K2 grip, but I personally like it better because we're trying as hard as possible to not run any Magpul on this. Um, the other parts that we have, we've completed the uh, entire lower assembly. Uh, we used a uh, uh, parts kit from, uh, an LPK lower parts kit from Palmetto State Armory, which is where we also got the grip. It came as a set for about 60-ish dollars. Um, the selector switch that we're using is a Strike Industries hex selector switch, and why it looks all cattywampus right here is because it is a 60 degree selector switch. This is it in the fire position. We cock the hammer back, we could put it on safe. So you can see you've got a very short, it is stiff when there's nothing to brace against, but a much shorter uh, selector travel as you would have compared to a uh, standard 90 degree selector switch. But all the parts came together very well. Everything was pretty easy to assemble. I had some concerns about how hard it'd be to build this lower because I've never built an AR-15 lower before and it was a piece of cake. It literally took me about 20 minutes and I'm not that mechanically inclined. Um, when teamed up with the Strike Industries Fang Trigger Guard, you've got a nice place to rest your finger down there or up there, either way. But what's important about this, and we'll see it on a future video once I take it to the range, um, this little guy helps you align your magazine, kind of tack your magazine against it and slide it in. So overall, this lower is done. The lower is complete, the upper is complete too, but we're not gonna show you that one yet because hey, we gotta give you a little bit of something to wait for for next week's video. And um, yeah, next week we'll look at the upper. Then we'll put the whole thing together, we'll take it to the range and see how she shoots. Uh, many thanks to Thordson Customs, and there will be a link to this, uh, this pistol kit on the video. Uh, many thanks to them for their uh, support with this project, they're helping us out a little bit on it, and we appreciate that. We appreciate companies that help us out, so help them out. 
If you are interested in this packet, this whole setup, go get one from them because I have a feeling once more people learn about it, these things are going to be disappearing off shelves. So get it while you can. Um, and also uh, many thanks to Strike Industries. Of course, they're, they help us out big time with a whole bunch of parts for this, as you'll see with the upper, because that's where a lot of the parts are. Be sure to keep watching for all of the uh, video updates on this. And as always, thanks for watching.